All oh, right, hello everybody and welcome to the latest Service Department News webinar. And today we are going to be discussing monetizing the guest journey with technology. My name's George Sell, I'm Editor-in-Chief at IHM, the publisher of Service Department News, and we are a publisher of B2B websites for the real estate and hospitality sectors, and we also organize conferences and awards. Now, this webinar has two sponsors, the first of which is Muse, a hospitality management system, and we're going to just going to see a quick video to find out more about them. Uh, if you'd like to know more about news, you can look in the chat on um, the Zoom toolbar and you can see lots of links as to how you can get hold of them and find out more. Our second sponsor today is the Residence Apartments. Um, based in London, they are a service department operator. And again, we're gonna see a video to find out a bit more about them. Okay, thanks to Muse and to the residents. Check them out in the chat and uh, go and find out more. Uh, and now let's meet our panelists. We've got a great team here today. So I'm gonna ask the guys to introduce themselves in turn and we'll go from left to right as we see them on the screen. So first of all, I'd like to, to welcome Marcus. Hello to you. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Marcus, CEO of uh, Like Magic. Like Magic is the digital hospitality solutions for guests, employees, and operators. Initially, we have developed like magic to run our mother company's hotels in the most efficient way with the best experience, not only for the guests, but also for the employees. We pretty quickly realized that uh, this is a way to go to yourselves, so we white labeled. I think what really basically differentiates us that our digital solutions for guests is tightly integrated with the one-stop solution for the employees. On top of that, we monitor the entire digital guest process and third-party key technologies like PMS and access solutions. We're based in Switzerland. Um, our customers uh, range from service department operators who basically run their properties without even staff on site to innovative ho the hospitality concepts where really staff have, again, time to cater for the guest needs. Geographically, we are operating in Dach, in Benelux, and Australia, and soon, in the UK as well. That's like magic. Right. Thank you, Marcus. Um, Alex, hello to you. Hi, good morning or good afternoon, depending what part of the world you're in. I'm Alex Cisneros. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer for Minhouse. Minhouse is a company that we take multifamily uh, buildings and convert them into very consistent experiences similar to a professionally managed Airbnb. So we offer the best of both worlds, the consistency of a hotel and the space of a larger accommodation. We are in 12 different markets, opening three more markets next year, including Washington, DC. Uh, we continue to grow and prove that this is a, a, a good model for multifamily owners. Uh, we produce uh, better income than what they do otherwise as, uh, as long-term uh, rentals. This is a, is a relatively a, a new model. I think there are many, many competitors here in the U.S. and is also a precedent in many parts of, of the world. My, my role and my role, I'm responsible for really bringing guests into our accommodations. I'm responsible for the entire customer journey, like marketing, getting customers to come in, product. We are a very tech-enabled company that tries to be as efficient as we can also run revenue management, analytics, uh, product, the contact center and other other parts of the organization that really focuses on bringing new customers and delivering a great experience. I've been in the hospitality industry for over 20 years and more being able to work with different products from, you know, tents in Southern France, uh, 
apartments in, in London and Rome, uh, hotels in the U.S., from economy hotels to luxury hotels. So I've been able to experience a lot of different parts of hospitality and very excited to talk about technology and the guest journey and monetizing that as well. All right. Thank you, Alex. And finally, good afternoon to you, Adir. Hi, thank you. Um, happy to be here. Um, my name's Adir. I'm a Chief Marketing Officer at Doove. Um, Doove is a guest experience platform. Uh, so we essentially work with hotels, chains, vacation rentals um, across the world uh, to enhance guest experience, uh, improve guest satisfaction, improve revenue collection, um, and minimize operational overhead. Um, we operate uh, in over 52 countries today with over a thousand different um, hotels and chains uh, working with us, I think uh, over half a million guests uh, that interact with Doof on a monthly basis. Um, and we essentially enable um, our customers uh, to improve the guest journey across all major touch points um, from pre-arrival, uh, during stay, all the way to post-checkout. Right. Thank you, Adir. Okay. Let's get cracking with the conversation. Uh, and we'd like to make the discussion as interactive as we can. So we'll have around 45 minutes of Q&A with our panelists, um, and then we'll have some time for audience questions at the end. So if you do have a question, please do submit them using the Q&A or the chat function in Zoom, and uh, we'll get around to answering them if we can. Uh, everybody who was registered for the webinar will be sent an email with a, record, a link to a recording of it over the next few days as well. So, Adir, I do want to stick with you for, for the first question. You've obviously got um, a client base which has a very broad uh, set of guests in terms of, of the demographics and the reasons for their stay and the length of stay and so on. So how can t tech help us to identify and cater to these different guest segments and, and what they need, whether they're business travellers, um, pleasure, remote workers or families and so on? That's a great question, George. Um... I think um, I'll kind of divide it into two. Uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, I think that, first of all, it's all about data at the end of the day. Um, and you know, the technology enables us to collect much more data. Um, and it's really about utilizing that data to build different guest personas, different uh, um, journeys, and different personalization uh, for each type of customer. Um, so even if we're looking at, you know, uh, um, a reservation um, coming in through an OTA, we can still understand, you know, how many people are in the booking, um, the type of room that they booked. Um, you know, is it a, a solo traveler? Um, is it a couple? Um, do they have any children? Um, and that already gives us like a very vague understanding initially of the type of customer, um, the type of guest that's going to be arriving. And, and already helps us kind of understand and tailor that experience. So if I, you know, for example, someone is a single traveler booking a single room, um, then I probably shouldn't uh, uh, offer them anything related to children or probably maybe even not something related to a, a romantic vacation. Whereas on the other hand, if someone is ordering in a single reservation, you know, two back-to-back uh, -back rooms um, and he's asking for a child crib, then probably not going to offer them uh, um, the latest clubbing uh, attractions in the city. Um, so I think it's about collecting as many data points as we can automatically through the reservation or through any other um, data source that's available for us, then enriching that data at every single touch point with the customer um, through, uh, um, you know, if, if we allow them to, to provide that, to do an online check-in, for example, then we can add in um, personalization questions during the check-in process. Um, so asking them, you know, the, what 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 is their uh, uh, purpose of stay and and if they have any specific preferences and enriching that profile um, in our PMS or in our CRM, depending on how we work, um, and then building individual journeys and and that are catered to each one of those personas. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Adia. Um, Alex, you mentioned that your role essentially is getting guests into the properties. So what role does technology play in terms of um, marketing and distribution and getting your brand out in front of people, which is the first step to getting them through the door? Yeah, it, so technology is super important. 
in in terms of the customer journey, like first in the awareness phase, I I think there's the we want to be where the customer is is searching and and trying to be front and center. And there there are multiple ways that consumers are looking for accommodations. Like now, it starts with mobile. I think that's where technology tends to continue to evolve and trying to find the the best solution where through your mobile device you can you can create a really good experience and and you can get them to to generate the booking i think technology is also along the journey is like creating a very seamless way of one getting the booking completed i think that's an area that we all try to get the customer to complete the transaction as fast as we can with the information they are looking for Technology also can create a very a contactless service that we, we aim to achieve. And that is from, from the initial uh, searching to this day, how do we, how do we uh, personalize an experience that for you is what you are looking for? I, I think what Adir was describing about the different segments is, is so fitting for us. I think all of us, we, we experienced after COVID uh, a shift on consumer behaviors. And for example, remote, wo remote workers became a huge component for many hotel companies. But what technology allow us to do is to match what customers were looking for at that time with the physical spaces. So one example that I think many companies did is that people were looking for a place where they can go and work remotely. So first, the technology needed to work. How do you book, for example, a space for hours of a day rather than the traditional concept of a hotel booking for a full night? How do you create a space where the people get all, all the technology connections and, and basic services to be able to work remotely? So I think what 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 is good about technology is, and, and if it's used right, is connecting what customers are looking for with the physical present spaces that are already in, in place and, and being able to deliver something that it really fulfills their, their need, whether it's like, give, I give you an, another example is that in the multifamily space, you have these big buildings of, of hundreds of units being built and, and the current uh, design is that there are a lot of many there are many uh, social and common areas that the buildings have. but And now you have the, this concept of leisure travel. So I, the opportunity that we have in front of us with technology is that how do you convert those spaces into remote workplaces where you they can come work, the residents can feel that the this space is still theirs if they live in those those buildings, but the technology is 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 allowing people to book, for example, those those common areas, being able to get the, the Wi-Fi and technology that you need, and creating loyalty is another element of this 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 new concept. So technology, I think it's is always front and center. I think the experience in the spaces need to come along to create that it really give you the the competitive advantage that. All, all hospitality companies we are striving for. Thank you, Alex. Um, Marcus, we, we've heard um, the word personalization already. How can data be leveraged to anticipate guest needs and, and personalize upsell opportunities? You know, uh, mm -hmm. Things which are specific, specific to that individual guest. I think Ali have just uh, elaborated that on on this quite nicely. You know, I think at the end of the day, it comes back to to a profile. That profile actually can be built up, uh, and I think based on that profile, I think you can really then offer personalized services to your to your guests, not just like the, ge the generic ones, right? And I think that's 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 the important that's the important bit. You know, otherwise, I think if you just operate the generic ones, I think which are not really specific to the needs of a guest. I think pretty soon, you know, people start asking, well, why actually are they basically sending me this? You know, why should I actually book this? You know, 
So I think really comes down to the to the profile that this profile is built up uh, properly, but also always, you know, with the consent of the guests, you know, and guests are really, guests are happy to provide you with the data. And previously I worked in credit cards, you know, so guests are happy to provide you with the data, but they actually want something back, you know, that basically is of, is of value to them, you know. Once you actually provide this to them, you know, they're happy to provide. I'll give you a very simple example, you know. We encourage basically the guests of our clients to set up a profile. Why? You know, because when they come back a second time, they actually check in with one click. So very easy, you know, there's the value actually that I'm getting. If I do something, if I share my data or I can choose my communication channel, right? We actually ask the guests, well, how do you want to communicate with us? That's just a different way of asking for the data, but also showing to them what the value is and what they're actually getting. I think this is absolutely crucial, you know, because that then creates the experience. You elevate the experience, but also then the loyalty, you know? Yeah, I, I sometimes cite the example of booking on um, budget airline websites where they try and upsell you every single thing you can think of. And the booking process is so cumbersome and so time consuming. And it absolutely drives you mad and it, it it leaves you with a bad feeling about that particular brand so what uh, hospitality brands have to strive to do the complete opposite to extract relevant information without making it um intrusive or boring or too time consuming it's there's quite a knack to it i think um, alex did you want to come in on that point yeah it's it, it's so true i think customers they they want to they want you to make them feel special and data like marcus is saying is so important being able to get that information and turn it into a better engagement and conversation i think what 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 is interesting to me is like some some of the 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 work around predictive analytics and being able to anticipate what customers are looking for i think that there's a there's a uh there are so many applications right now in, in terms of what customers are looking for. We are, we are a smaller brand and we, we like to play with, with different ideas and, and different concepts. But what we are discovering is that the, the more information we know, even simple algorithms can predict what is going to likely to delight to you. So for example, if you're coming if you're in you are if I know that you are a family and you are coming to the beach. Can I offer you an early check-in? And in in some cases we can monetize that, and other cases is a way of surprise and delight with those those with that information. So I I think as things are evolving, uh, I definitely agree that the foundation is the data. Personalization is super important, but I think how do you pre anticipate and and proactively offer something that they are going to value? I think is super interesting. We are trying. I'm sure other people are already doing it, but definitely what we see other companies offering everything to every customer. I don't think is the way to go. I think it's is finding that personalized and unique element that is going to make the experience better. Yeah, Alex, does does um. Marcus's point about guests being happy to supply you with information, does that resonate with your experience? And, and how do you strike the balance between, um, you know, being intrusive and asking for too much? What, how do you go about that? Yeah, that, that's an interesting uh, area. So I, I think in Europe, you have more regulations that are one educating customers of that data is being shared and giving them ways for them to control a little bit more about what data you 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 want to share and and being able to 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 have a a safety net in some respects here in the US uh, I think California is is the first one that I think implemented GDPR and we are it, it shows the theme that customers are now understanding that that they they want to be able to be surprised in the light, as I said before, but at the same time, they don't want their data to be everywhere. They want to be able to protect that information. And I, and I think it's, I'm, I'm personally finding that it's, it's actually harder and, and to gather more and more data as we used to. I think even Google is, is realizing that the information that we used to use for, 
for marketing and, and digital strategies is no longer available. So I, I, I think that consumers that have an affinity with a, with a brand and they see the value of sharing that information, they're going to keep sharing. I think if you if you haven't really proved that, that there's benefit for the customer to, to share that data, I think we're in an interesting spot. I'm not sure if everybody wants to share as much as they used to before, but I think that's on us to continue to show them why that data is important. I think you're right. I think consumers are realizing that their data is valuable to brands and they are happy to share it with brands, as you say, that they have an affinity with, but they are distinctly unhappy to share it with brands that they don't resonate with. It's, a, it's an interesting spot. Marcus, did you want to come in on that point? Just very, very quickly, you know, I think as you mentioned GDPR, you know, I think uh, looking at the rule set and coming from the financial services industry, you know, it's very straight, it's very clear, you know, guests can actually come to you and say, hey, I want my data, please forget me, you know, and that then comes to the tech stack, you know, how easily can you then do this as a brand, you know, how can I see the deliver on, uh, on, on, that, uh, on that request of customers absolutely crucial, you know. How often do they actually ask for that to happen, though, Marcus? In in your experience, is is that is that a regular thing or once in a blue moon? Well, it it does it does happen. It does happen not too often, but I think it's just how how the rules and regulations are, right? And I think you just create trust, right, by basically being able to do this. Uh, us as a provider, a technology provider to our customers, right? That 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 they know that they actually can come to us if they basically are asked these type of questions. Yeah. Thanks, Marcus. Adia, do you want to come in on that? Uh, yeah, I think you know. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it it's an exchange of value, um, and I think that guests are happy to provide their details um, as long as they get enough value out of it. And um, it's 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 funny this comparison that I have in my mind, but I'm kind of looking at it like uh, um, when you log into a social network uh, um, or or basically almost any website today, and they ask you like you know. Do you approve cookies? Or, for example, if you you know download uh, Instagram on your new phone uh, or log into a new profile, and they're like, you know, do you want? We're gonna show you ads anyway. These ads can be completely unrelated, or we can try and personalize these ads for you. So at least they'll be a bit more interesting for you. And who knows? Maybe even you'll purchase something that was actually you know something that you wanted. Um, so. It's, it's a bit of a weird analogy, but I feel that it's kind of like the same thing. Um, guests are happy to provide details because the, you know, the, the property is going to try and upsell them anyway, but it could be a completely off the chart, irrelevant upsell, which is just going to annoy me as a guest, or it can be something that actually makes sense to me as a guest during my stay. And in that case, I'm happy to provide details that will help you, the hotelier or, or the host, to, you know, to, to give me that relevant upsell that would make everyone happy. Um, so I think, again, it's, it's really about context. And I think that if you ask for those details um, at the right time with the right context, um, guess more likely than not will be happy to share those details. Yeah, yeah. I had an ad appear on my Facebook timeline recently for private helicopter charters, which uh, just goes to show that they don't know too much about my financial status anyway. <laughs> <laughs> made, made me chuckle. Um, sticking with you um, for a minute, Adia, I'm, I'm interested to find out about the the, the, the kind of conduit, the, con the communication um, channels between guests and property. Is the mobile app still the primary interaction point between the two? Um, and what are the latest trends and developments in app design and functionality? Sure. So I think that, uh, um, you know, if we look a few years back, everyone kind of rushed to build their own their own app. Everyone wanted to have uh, an app in the app store with their logo and their brand, um, which from a brand perspective makes a lot of sense. But from a guest perspective, it doesn't make it any sense. Uh, um, as as you know, the end user, um, as a guest, I don't want to clutter my phone with hundreds of different apps. Uh, uh, we call them garbageware um, that I'm rarely using. Uh, um, 
you know, I, I uh, booked a flight with, uh, I don't even remember which low-cost airline it was, and they forced me to download their app in order to do an early check-in. And, and that made me so frustrated. Uh, and right after the flight, I gave them a one-star review in the app store and deleted the app. Um, so I think you know, people don't want to download an app just for like a weekend stay, or even if I'm staying for you know a couple of weeks, it's still an annoying process. And I think that what we're seeing more and more today is um, is web-based applications. So essentially, it's just a web app running in your browser. And with one click, you can create an icon on your phone's desktop um, and access it as if it was a mobile native app. But it doesn't force you to download anything. It doesn't force you to install anything. Uh, I think it's a much better um, solution. That's kind of like our uh, uh, belief and, and and that's kind of like our guideline. Um, unfortunately, there are still today a few things that force you to do a mobile app. Uh, for example, like controlling Bluetooth devices. So um, if, for example, the property has like a Bluetooth enabled smart locks, uh, then you probably still need, or like NFC, then you still need a mobile app to control those, which is kind of annoying, but I think that you know that the industry is kind of moving towards allowing web applications to control those uh, um, services as well. So I'm hoping to see a, a nice change uh, over the next year or two on that front as well. Um, but I think that so one one thing is the app, and another thing is the communication itself. And and what we're seeing today is that more and more again, at least from from our perspective and 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 kind of like our outlook on. Um, on the industry is that we're seeing more and more, especially in Europe, uh, uh, usage of WhatsApp. Um, both from the guest side, they love it, and from the um, host side as well. It's very easy to use. It's very direct and, in a way, personal. Um, guests love it that they have the ability to chat with the host, with the reception, um, directly from their phone. Uh, without, again, having to download anything or even going to the web app and opening a chat. It's just there on their WhatsApp where they use it all the time. Um, again, very relevant to Europe. In the US, obviously, WhatsApp has less of an adoption. Um, Asia is a totally different story with WeChat and, and other services. Okay, thanks, Sophia. Um, Alex, I can see you've got your hand raised there. Yes, I, I think what Adir said, I, I want to second that on the number of apps, I think we, we don't have one as many, but at the same time, we want to be able to interact with customers and, and what's the best method. And and, and I, I, it's it's very interesting to me because when, when we've been able to use technology in so many different ways, but that you're always going to have a group of people that just want to talk to you. And the, the the importance of integrating mobile into like a voice interaction is actually to me, I, I find it that is growing. I, I was actually reading about some what, what what Salesforce release and their conference they were talking about uh providing a full solution, like doing the all the AI and, and the 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 automation. But if you still want to talk to a person, you you want to be able to to have that that as a, as an an option, so I think that that is the that's an area that that the evolution maybe is like we are not going to have an app. We're gonna have other web enabling uh, ways of interacting with the customer. I think it's super important. Like an, another point that I did mention is essential for us is the operate operations of a property. We want to be able to also use data and mo and technology to track how efficient we are in cleaning rooms, for example, or how, who is accessing the units, who is, who is accessing common areas. And, and we, we know that the apps and technology can help us track and a uh, movement of, of staff and, and being able to be operationally efficient. But I, at the same time, we don't want to develop an app. So I, I think that there's, this is a, a, an opportunity that we see that, we want to continue to manage our operations efficiently, but it's probably not going to go be through an app. We want to be able to see uh, how the different access controls get used. Like all that data needs to keep coming in into one place so we can make better decisions. So mobile devices are, are really important, especially 
with when people want to continue to have those voice interactions, especially now, like in WhatsApp. I think that with international travelers, we have a property in Miami that is fascinating to me how how WhatsApp is embedded into how people like to talk. And they are very comfortable in just recording a message and sending it to you. And now you need to have technology to convert that voice into te text to be able to efficiently respond. So it's a, it's a very interesting part of technology that I don't think we, we are trying to solve for it, but we know that it may not be through an app. Marcus, what's, what's your take on this? Yeah, just maybe one last point. Fully agree, you know, with the uh, with the web app piece. That's our, our our right from the start. Our philosophy, you know, but it doesn't stop there, right? To create real great adoption, you know, I think then you continue. It's a one stop shop for your guests, you know. The easy, basically, um, uh, digital check in, returning guests with one click, and then they can actually buy the services right from the app with their stored means of payments, which obviously are tokenized. Again, making it easy, don't need to re-end the data. And yes, they can actually then open the doors. You know, I think it's, if you provide that frictionless, really that seamless experience, you know, then you see really high adoption rates. That's what, at least what we see in our, in our portfolio, you know, because if it's easy, if it's frictionless, people will use it. As simple as that. Thanks, Marcus. What is the feeling at the moment with um, AI bots and, ha and having a AI, generative AI interacting with guests, particularly with an emphasis on, you know, upselling and, and monetizing? Are guests comfortable with this yet? And is the technology sufficiently advanced to make it a seamless process or, or is it still a bit clunky? Um, Dia, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So I think... Uh, um... You know, again, it's funny because I keep getting back to the same point, but it's all about data. Um, and I think that if you have enough data about the guest, um, then using an AI chatbot can really make a difference. Um, again, if you have that data, if you know your guest and you know their, you know, their profile and you've created this persona of who this guest is um, or who those guests are, um, then, you know, kind of dipping into your pool of available upsells and offering the right tailored upsell to the right guest um, at the right time based on their journey or based on an interaction with them um, is is an amazing tool. Um, I think putting that aside, it's not really upselling, but it does have uh, um, uh, a lot to do with revenue, which is operational overheads and operational costs. Um, just having a chatbot answer incoming queries from guests can really, really make a difference and really help you operate um, with a much lower overhead, with less staff, reply faster to guests. Um, what we've been working on on our side, at least, is, is also prioritization. So essentially, we analyze all incoming queries from guests in real time, comparing it, like doing a sentiment analysis and understanding the urgency, the frustration level, uh, combining it with the guest data um, and understanding which inquiry has to be answered first. Um, and hosts on our on our platform that have enabled this feature have seen like amazing results in terms of lowering 60, 70, sometimes 80% of incoming inquiries are answered automatically. And the ones that do need uh, um, a human interaction or human intervention from, from the host side, uh, get answered much faster um, and are resolved to a much higher level of satisfaction in in like post stay surveys uh, that we're conducting. Um, so I think that again, there's a lot to be done with um, with AI and chatbots as long again as you're doing it in a smart way and in as personal and and um, and data driven way as possible. Thanks, Adia. Mar Marcus, what's your take on that? Look, I think I have a very simple view on this, you know, if uh, if you're using as a guest, you use a chatbot, you know, if you get the right answer very quickly, you start basically continue using it, right? And I think really what, uh, and what Adir said, you know, it's so, so important. I think that's where basically that using basically uh, sentiment analysis, you know, to realizing, you know, when do I now need to hand over to a human? You know, because it's a critical step, you know, critical process, critical situation for the guests. 
is absolutely crucial. You know, if basically a guest is in front of a locked door at two o'clock at night, probably not the best, you know, situation to try to solve this with a with a, with a bot. You know, but what I would like to add, you know, on top of that is um, is uh, regardless of who communicates with the guests, you know, I think is it the AI, is it basically the employee? It needs to come in one place. For the employee that your full overview of the communication history of your guests now that's absolutely crucial otherwise you have a fragmented landscape here yet another dashboard here yet another communication channel and employees cannot work like that right so it needs to come back into one place and i think that basically allows really for efficient servicing thank you marcus alex i bought something that you've tried at mint house and how have they worked yeah, I was I was going to comment on on, on this. Uh, so the way we we look at chatbot uh, here at mini houses, anything that is repetitive that we have well documented SOPs that we can serve up that information to the customer, let's use uh, a chatbot. I think that is a really good application. We have the answer. It's there. It's repetitive. There's very little emotional connection with the customer in those interactions. So let's let's use that. However, in more complex decisions where there's people need to engage in an emotional way with a customer, let's let's switch to to a person. And what we have learned is that there's something in between that we haven't been able to crack the code yet. And and that is there are repetitive. Uh, tasks that customers are going just to ask and we can serve up the information. However, then there's the next question or the or the expansion of the existing uh, request that now the, the chatbot may not really offer the best alternative. I'll give you the perfect example. So one of the services that we offer is that before you arrive, you can we, we interact with you so you can do your grocery shopping, your supermarket shopping through through our technology. So you're gonna select, I want bread, ice cream, milk, whatever. And then everything is going to be ready in your unit when before you arrive. That's a service that we provide is through technology. It works well, customers love it. But what happens when the, there was a, perhaps a mistake in the order and they wanna be able to have a chocolate ice cream instead of strawberry. Those, I we noticed that the the they can be handled pretty straightforward. I'm sure that the other good technologies and companies that have developed solutions, but then you you are better off having a person dealing with resolving some situations, even though you may have the option to serve up the data. So it's 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 more about continue to have offer that concierge service to customers when we feel is appropriate and avoid having a cookie cutter type of solution when the customer really wants to have a connection with you. So it's all like hospitality is about that, right? Trying to build meaningful connections and sometimes the chatbot is not always doing that well. Yeah, thank you, Alex. <clears throat> On a related note, we recently did um, a webinar where one of the panelists was actually a chat GPT powered bot answering questions on the implications of AI for hospitality and real estate. Uh, it's worth a watch. Um, and we've posted a link to a recording of that in the chat if anybody would like to go and have a look at that. It was uh, it was good fun to do. I don't think it's been done before. And it was some, of, some of the answers it came up with were, were quite interesting and we had a good discussion around it. So I recommend having a quick look at that. Um, one of the ways obviously that we can monetize a guest stay is to have a more efficient uh, operational process back of house and, and fewer staff um, needed to fulfill everything that the guest needs. So is staff facing um, back of house tech evolving at the same pace as the guest facing tech? Marcus, you, you offer both on your platform. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's a very, very good uh, question, George, and also very relevant, you know. I think there's much more, you know, there's so many digital guest journeys out there. And if I look at how many intuitive solutions are really out there for stuff, not too many. That's why, you know, I think when we built like Magic, you know, we realized that. And basically, if you use the software to run your own properties, you can not only look at the guest side of things, 
you need to consider the employees as well. That's why we actually built the employee solution, which is tightly integrated with the guest solution as well. How did we do that? Because we were integrated with all business critical systems like access, the PMS, the messaging. We went to our employees and asked them, what data do you need? Doesn't matter where the data resides, you know? It, today, you know, they work with five, six different logins, you know, different systems. It's about, don't care about that. And then we brought it together in the user interface for the employees where they basically can do now 80% of their daily work. And basically that solution is trained in four hours. It even has a traffic light system there because we actually have all the integration to surrounding systems. So, you know, if something actually goes wrong with PMS, if something goes wrong with the access solution, we can actually flag it, right? And I think this is really, this is really powerful because it makes the job of an employee of a host much easier, you know, because then you can operate with this solution from anywhere. You know, our service department uh, operators, they basically have no staff on site, but they can actually centralize, do centralized servicing. And it, it actually really delivers phenomenal results. You know, if I basically just can give you one, one example, you know, and that is that combination of basically digital journey and the employee solution. And Shawnee Hotels in Vienna for hotels, you know, they had digital solutions. They didn't really have an employee solution. And now looking at the numbers, you know, their, their adoption rate on the digital guest journey went up from 8 to 80%. And basically the calls, you know, decreased to the front office stuff by 50%, you know. And at the same time, basically the, um, the, the, the guest satisfaction score increased from 4 to 5. And I think this is really, you know, I think if you combine these two, if you have, if have an integrated approach, you know, I think one benefit is, you know, training is for the staff is really decreased rapidly. And you can also source staff from a much wider pool because it's much more intuitive, it's much easier to learn. And at the end of the day, it's also much more fun for the employees. So this is really, you know, basically our story and how we looked at it. And, uh, and I think really that combined approach is very, very powerful. Thank you, Marcus. Um, Adir, did you want to come in on that point? Yeah, I... Um... I, I totally agree. I think that uh, um, a lot of solutions are very focused on the gate on the guest side, and they're kind of leaving the, the back office uh, uh, side behind the scenes. Um, and and you know we we've seen a lot of um, PMSs and 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 other types of software that are so outdated. It feels like it's uh, um, kind of like a historic build from the eighties. Um, where you see like huge ugly boxes and, and like UI that's like 30 years old. And that's the tech that, you know, operators and, 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 and hosts have to deal with. Um, and it's such a frustration, you know, having to work that way where on the other hand, your guest is, is interacting with like the super slick and, 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 and very fine UI. Um, and a great app. And then behind the scenes, you're, you feel like you're working on something that hasn't been updated for like 20, 30 years. Um, and I think that there's still a lot to be done on that side. Um, but I think that like the, the, the tools and the platforms and solutions that think both way and think by, letter, by literal on, on the guest side and on the host side are the ones um, that, that are gonna stand out at the end of the day. Um, you know, we have... Um, we're also in, you know, in the vacation rental and service department uh, um, space. And we have, um, in some cases, customers that have hundreds of apartments in, in a city um, and just one person managing all of those apartments from his iPad with, with uh, our software installed on it. And it pulls data from the PMS and it pulls data from the CRM and it pulls data from the mobile keys and he can lock and unlock doors and, and manage upsells and manage communication. And all he has to do is just travel with an iPad um and and comparing that to you know like a five star hotel in a major city that still uses an on prem pms that hasn't been updated for like at least 15 years um just you know the, the variance is is staggering i, I want to come and talk a bit more about integration in a minute but uh, thanks to dear alex did you want to come in on that point before we just, move on just a couple of comments i think in the the, the user technology and as an operational tool for housekeeping, maintenance, staffing, it's it, it's improving and in this in, in our case is great because we can flex the business and be super efficient. I think the dream is how do you have 
technology that is interconnected in an organization. Uh, for example, like my, I started in hospitality 23 years ago. Uh, I knew how to program and they needed somebody to start this revenue management division for a uh, company. And so my background was very data driven and eventually evolved in so many different ways. But what I've always seen is that revenue management, for example, has so much data and sometimes it's just withheld within a system and not shared in a meaningful way. Why we cannot share, you know, occupancy levels with maintenance and operations so they can predict and anticipate the staffing levels more efficiently or even better integrate data with financial systems in order to know what what whether there's exposure and forecasting and budgeting. So I, I think this is a super interesting area. I think that uh, like, like Adir was mentioning is that there are some systems that are still like blue screen, all systems that it doesn't allow for business to have more insights, flexibility, predictive analytics and, and a ways of managing the business better. But what's exciting is that there are new players that are challenging some of those those old ways of running hospitality that is now information is better integrated. It can be shared with other departments. You can do forecasting and anticipate and being able to run the business more efficiently. So and 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 the last thing I will say is that I think with training and training staff is another area where technology is is evolving and helping so much. Like there are platforms that use AI right now in, in order to serve up meaningful training to staff that you can you can get to where you need to get faster. So I think it's a pretty pretty interesting is interesting times to see that technologies are evolving. AI is helping us train our staff, give us more information, but we still have opportunities to integrate. Thank you, Alex. Um Adir, are we getting to the stage now where some of the Pretty horrendous legacy issues around integrating different systems. Are we are we almost over that that issue now? Uh, as sort of technology architecture, if you like, becomes more com sort of universally compatible, or are there still a lot of glitches? I'm afraid not. <laughs> I really wish I could uh, I could say uh, otherwise, but uh, I think that there's still so much um, fragmentation in the market. Um, so many individual solutions and, and so many different pieces of the puzzle that still don't play nice together. Um, and, you know, so many different CRMs and PMSs and POSs. And at the end of the day, you know, you, you know, from at least from our standpoint, as, as a guest experience platform, it kind of sits on top and integrates with everything. Um, we have a pretty big uh, um, integrations team. Um, you know, both on the uh, a bit dev and partnership side, and also obviously on the development side, and it's uh, it takes a lot of effort to to maintain those integrations and keep them updated. And there's no one protocol, and you know, just on like digital keys and and mobile lock front, there's you know, we we work with with Salto, uh, um, and we work with Asabloy, and we work with. Uh, uh, you know, so many different other solutions and each one is like their own different API and their own different source code and their own different legacy codes. Um, and, and, you know, not even to mention different POSs, different PMSs. So um, again, I really hope that at some point there will be a bit of a kind of a universal solution. Um, some of my background is, is uh, coming from, uh, from the mobile game industry and, and mobile space. Um, and I remember, you know, when when mobile games exploded at, at the beginning of the data industry, that was like 10 years ago or even more, um, you needed an individual API for every single thing you wanted to do. Um, and every single ad platform that you wanted to run ads on, you needed to integrate another API and another API. So you got to a point that if your app was, you know, 50 megabytes, it could you could sometimes end up with like 300 megabytes just because of integrations. And then a couple of solutions emerged like um, MAT, mobile app tracking, and then uh, um, um, uh, uh, apps flyer um, and another a couple of other uh, solutions that that were able to kind of figure out a unification type of, of solution where you just install 
one type of, of SDK or API, and then everything connects to that. And I think that whoever is going to figure that out um, for the hospitality space is going to end up with a, a, a very big market. Yeah, interesting. It does seem that, that the gaming world leads leads the way in a lot of different uh, technological yeah. frontiers. Interesting stuff. I've got one more question I want to ask you, Marcus, and then we'll go on to um, a couple of questions from, from the audience. Is the cost of adopting all this technology for operators coming down as it's becoming more widespread? And, and how can operators um, quantify their uh, the ROI of their technology adoption? Look, I think the great the great story is that I think there's even becoming more and more solution available. I think there's built in a smart way, they're cloud-based, they're open APIs, and it still de depends how is your tech stack built and how can you really integrate with them? You know, if you basically have a, a modern tech stack that lets you allow you to integrate, yes, the cost is coming down. You know, and I think that's, that's our view. Now, how, how do you actually measure ROI? I think there's like the traditional measures, you know, like it's the, it's the revenue, it's the efficiency, also driven by the adoption of the, of the guest journey, lower operational costs, guest satisfaction. But what we basically now have seen again, because we're, we're basically really following that integrated approach, guests and employees, get, um, staff satisfaction. Because if basically your, your tech stack is outdated, it's cumbersome, it's, it's hard to work, there's a lot of manual effort in there, staff will not be happy about that. And that has an impact then again on, uh, on, on, on guests, you know, and I think if you really actually work with a, with a tech stack, which is also easy to use for your, for, for your staff, you know, I think a lot of automation in there, then either, you know, like a lot of uh, um, time is freed up for your staff and they can really deliver true hospitality. If you really believe in having people on site, and if you basically say, hey, basically I'm a service department provider that wants to offer uh, basically um, operate this staffless, even the better, you know, then you basically have a cent basically you can run this from a centralized point, very lean tech stack. But I think, I think what we really need to take a look, even in these times, you know, how happy is our staff, you know, and how give them also really the tools to work with that they can be efficient. Yeah, I mean, regular staff turnover and, and recruitment and training is a, a, um, a time consuming and expensive pursuit. So yeah, the, 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 the more happy and your staff are and the, and the, the longer you can retain them. So it's, a, it's definitely um, a good investment. Okay, let's move on to some audience questions. Um, the first one here is from Eloise Hansen. Uh, glad to know you're watching Eloise. And I'm gonna ask this one to you, Alex, to start with. How are you managing data flow and ownership across different platforms to create a unified customer profile? And what, if anything, is hindering this? So we, we have seen for the past two or three years, we've been working on integrating all data in one data lake. Uh, with any hospitality company, it starts with transactional data, right? Knowing what has bookings, any past uh, history, and as well as transactions in general. What we've been doing is, is adding to different other sources of data that can be interesting to start creating more of different personas that we can market to. So whether it's demand data from, from Google Analytics on the website, whether we have some loyalty components, we implemented a, a it's not a loyalty program. What it is is a, you get a special member rate uh, that if you sign up with us, so we, we are able to get more information about your behaviors you have to log in to access that member race so you we are able to have more insights of what you are searching for so the data continues to grow uh, i think one of the, the the challenges is bringing it all together in a way that is normalized that we can use it across the board the other part that we've been putting a lot of time and effort is investing in first in mbi like being able to educate the organization and, and multiple parts of the business and being able to know more about the customer and serve that information up to operations and other areas of the business. We are moving into more forecasting and predicting uh, predictive analytics now in the in the evolution of more advanced analytics. And, and that's where we are right now. So the, the, the data continues to flow, like being able to create that, that, that customer profile and not just the profile. I think that's another opportunity that we have in hospitality is that 
generations are the next generations are also future customers that we need to market to. So how do you get the information from them and and know that they are they are part of an existing customer? So you you know when you travel, all of your kids, the first thing they ask you when they check in is like, what's the Wi-Fi code? So with that, we have the ability now to know more information about the the different groups of people that are traveling together. And so we we continue to work on building that that network of touch points and, and connections of, of people within a cost uh, with, related to a, a, a customer. And that's that kind of the future is like we want to keep find getting more and more information, being able to talk to you in a meaningful way. Uh, I think another opportunity that we have is like in hospitality, we tend to say, if you are under 21, you're not welcome. Uh, but we need to start knowing about that you are, you ha we have some information so that the time is right, you can start marketing and and, know, and being able to promote the brand. So it's still working in, work in progress, but the data keeps expanding and the as we said before, a lot of systems produce their own data, bringing it into one central place is one of the challenges that we are trying to overcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, Adir, I'm going to ask the next one to you, and this is from Abhinav Naidu. Thank you for your question, Abhinav. Have you got any unique examples for data-orientated concierge services to understand what are the data points other than the usual data that can be collected in order to serve customers better? Sure. So, uh, um, I think a couple of of, um, of example is uh, is understanding. Um, again, it, it's really a question of what what data you can get and and how you interact with your guests through the guest journey. Um, I'll give us maybe a, a short example from how we're doing it in, in Doov. So, someone books uh, um, a stay, um, and then we send out an um, we send them out a, 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 a um, an invite, sorry, to to start their uh, online check-in in advance. So to pre-check in. Um, during the pre-check in, we um, based on the reservation data, we can surface additional questions like, you know, what is the type of stay? Is this a business trip, a, a romantic vacation, a family trip? Um, where are you coming from? Um, when are you, if, you know, what time are you expected to arrive? Um, how are you coming? Are you coming in through flight, through uh, public transport or with a car? Um, and then based on all these data points, you can start tailoring relevant um, relevant concierge services and relevant upsell. So if someone is flying in, they're landing at 6 a.m., the check-in is at 2 p.m., you can offer them an early check-in um, or you can offer them airport transfer. Uh, if they're coming in with a car, you can offer them um, exclusive or like a, a VIP parking. Uh, if someone's coming in for an extended stay, then you can offer them uh, kind of fill the fridge type of services. Um, I think Alex mentioned before, which is a, a, a great upsell. And then another thing that you can do is during the check-in process, um, you can ask them what they care about and what interests them. Um, and you can have, what we do is we have like pre-filled boxes. So uh, and entertainment, museums, um, parks, restaurants, et cetera. And then um, based on the location, we can offer concierge services. So, you know, let's book tickets for a football uh, uh, match for you, or let us uh, book a reservation uh, for this restaurant or things like that. Um, and then obviously you can also kind of, you know, create deals in advance with those vendors or with those providers and also enjoy a bit of a revenue share um, in that part as well. And then everyone. Excellent. Thank you, Adia. Um, we have reached the end of our hour. That has flown by and there's a lot more we could have spoken about, but uh, a great conversation. Um, thank you all for your participation. I'm just going to show a few slides before we wrap up. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll leave the session open for a couple of minutes so you can take some notes from, from all the stuff that's in the chat. So our next service department news webinar is on November the 21st, and that will be about build, building brand loyalty. So it will echo, echo some of the themes that we've discussed today um, and look at those in more detail. The uh, link to register for that webinar is in the chat. 
<clears throat> excuse me, um, later this month, we have got an in-person event, one of our Urban Living Insights events, um, all about hotels and hospitality. Uh, that will be hosted by my colleague, Eloise. And if you would like to come along to that, you can see the link to sign up also in the chat. If you'd like to work with us at Service Department News or any of our other brands here at IHM, then do get in touch with my colleague Piers, whose details you can see on the screen and also in the chat. And finally, just want to say thank you. Thanks to the residents and to Muse for sponsoring the webinar today. Thank you to Marcus, to Adia and to Alex for their great insight and contributions. Uh, thank you to you for watching and I will see you on the next webinar next month. Thanks very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Hello. We are International Hospitality Media, or IHM for short. IHM is the number one brand to engage with decision makers in hospitality and real estate. Our four multimedia brands lead their respective sectors with breaking news, comments, trends, and opinions across a variety of multimedia solutions. We provide an inspirational community to connect people through world-class events, webinars, podcasts, award schemes, and much more. But let us share our story of who we are and what we do. Over 10 years ago, Piers and George had a light bulb moment to provide expert opinion, comments, and low-cost digital content. And so, they went on a journey over the past decade, creating media platforms to serve the hospitality and real estate industries. We now have an engaged audience with a reach of over 60,000 monthly visitors across our website, 52,500 in our email database across all sectors, and over 68,000 across our social channels. Everything we do challenges the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. We make things simple and very easy to work with us, and we're a friendly bunch too. We offer creative solutions to help you achieve your business goals. Read, watch, listen, and meet with IHM. Connect with us for a chat today. Just look at some of the brands we have worked with recently.